Welcome to the Sauce Pod. Welcome to the Sauce Pod, you guys. We are taking a slightly different approach today, where instead of covering every little tiny piece of news that's come up over the last week, we're just going to take three big stories and go deep into them. If there's some other tidbits, knowledge, insights that we have to share along the way, we totally will. But like, we we want to be able to dissect some of these things deeper, starting with a really big story that kind of deserves like, even if we were doing this the way that we did, we have been doing, Anna, like this story still would probably take up like 20 minutes <laughs> of a conversation um, because it's big. And it is that Twitter has now rebranded to X and we can we can do it like I can do a timeline. Do you want to give any context on that, Anna? Or do you want me to like go into a, a timeline of like what I know about how it all happened? Well, you can go into a timeline, but when you say, because I'm not like super familiar on what happened, yeah. when you say it rebranded, I like my app is still showing the blue bird. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, so I'm like a little confused. So explain. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let me just, yes, let me just strap into this, folks. Like, get your drinks ready because this is like quite a whirlwind. I even took some notes too because I, I'm like, I got to make sure we get the facts. Got to get the facts. So here's the tea. This is what happened. Sunday, like at like 1230 in the morning Eastern time, Elon mm-hmm. Musk tweets like some some teaser stating something like, soon the birds will be free and soon we shall bid adieu to the Twitter brand and gradually all the birds, like some bullshit. And well, then he follows up and he's like, if a good enough X logo is posted tonight, we'll make it go live worldwide tomorrow. At which point I'm just like, oh dear God. said that. A good enough? If a good enough X logo is posted tonight, like, what are we doing here, Mr. Musk? Are we literally crowdsourcing from, like, internet trolls of, like, let's see who can make the best fucking Canva design? Because that's what it looks like. It's it so does. Bad. It's so bad. Uh, and I won't even begin to talk about his fascination with X, like, obsession with this idea of X and has wanted something to become X for the better part of a decade we'll we'll touch on that in a little bit but basically it does lead me to believe that he has crowdsourced and i think some like additional news follow-up has come to light saying that like he had a couple different designers like work on this but it was really kind of like an overnight deal i think the designer who worked on it had like two weeks experience maybe like doing some stuff with twitter um i'm not quite sure i'll have to like backtrack on the facts of who designed it I just read so there's like this article that was launched three or published three hours ago that says the designer uh that worked on it was inspired by a font he found online Uh uh-huh yeah really I don't know man all I know is that it's bad for a lot of reasons but I'll get to that in one second before I do I want to like explain what happened because he tweeted this thing out, right, where he's like, if a good enough X logo is posted tonight, like, I can just imagine he has, like, an Upwork or, like, Fiverr listing out. Like, can you imagine, like, seeking designer for, for Fortune 500 company new logo needed by end of day, budget $15. Budget <laughs> $15? Of course it's $15. <laughs> <laughs> like I could just, I could totally imagine like that's the way that like I think Elon Musk thinks like he he does, I think, veer towards like how can I bootstrap this like how can I yeah. do this the most efficient way possible like let's just use the people of Twitter and have somebody make it for us so that's kind of what he did and then it just like appeared Monday afternoon it like. I refreshed my browser um, on my desktop and the X logo was just there. The problem was that it didn't, <laughs> this was not a well thought out brand, like yeah. brand rollout or whatever, whatever you want to call it. And I think that you and me as like traditional marketers, it's just like, this is not how you do a rebrand, but fine. I'll, I'll get right. over it. What pisses me off is the fact that it's like all over the place. Like even right now, it's like half of the shit is still Twitter. You can still tweet, but the X is now on the desktop app. I don't even think it's made it to the mobile app yet. I reloaded my browser page and the X is showing up now. What the heck? I just just saw the (laughs) Speak of the devil. It's insane. Minutes ago. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. It was waiting for you. It was waiting for the right time. So it's like updated. It's now in like the favicon too. Like, so when you load it, this is one of the problems that I have with it right now is that when you load it, it's, there's an X on the favicon on the tab and it gets lost in the sea of everything else. It's just like getting used to like this new visual trigger, visual signal that you have open. You see all the time, the little blue bird is just not there anymore. So it kind of is just kind of, you know, the question is like, what is this now? Like, is Twitter X now? Is that what we're calling it? Twitter even started removing like half of their sign on their San Francisco headquarters on Monday after they changed the logo to <laughs> to an X. So they literally call like, I don't even know, some private like contractors to come out and start taking down the sign. No permits, nothing with the city. Traffic is like blocked. People are like, what the fuck? People are taking pictures of it. The police department comes and they're like, um, hi guys, you can't be doing this. Like you don't have any of the permits. And mm-hmm. they were just like, they, so they removed half of the sign and then they stopped. And then I guess the, the police were kind of like, okay, I guess we don't care because Elon Musk, sure, fine, whatever. <laughs> um, I think they might have finished it. But this is like such a grand sweeping gesture that I think is so aligned and characteristic of Elon Musk, which is like to just make this big sweeping, like yet casual change of like, I want to do this. So I'm going to do it. I want to buy Twitter. So I'm going to do it, you know? No, it's almost like to bring the attention back to Twitter like it feels like a little bit of a play with threads you know in the oh 100 like, percent social verse now he's like oh okay let's bring back the attention back to Twitter hey guys it's actually x now oh <laughs> we got 100 percent a PR play xing <laughs> it's not so bad <laughs> like, no, so okay so like let's get into some of the like interesting I don't know I guess we could call them thoughts that we have about this or that I have about this so far, which is why it's happening. We all know that like Elon's had this like fascination, right? With doing this like so-called super app or everything app, much like in the style of like WeChat in China, right? Like you've written about that so many times, Anna, where we talked about like how this is his ultimate dream to like change it into this. And then a couple months ago, he changed all the corporate filing names to X Corp, right? That wasn't even that long ago. That was like two months ago or something. So it was like, okay, the stars are kind of aligning and like we can see how he wants to do an everything app. He bought Twitter. He changed all the stuff to X Corp. So it's not like we can really say that this was like totally unexpected. I just think that it it's wild that it just kind of happened suddenly and yet it's only really like a half-baked rebrand. And we know that he's done things like switching out the logos in the past for like the Dogecoin, like that kind of shit. So you never really know. We don't (laughs) press can't really get through to them. So I guess like it's it's X now. We're calling it X now, which has all kinds of like insane implications, such as the fact that like, what do you call a tweet or right? It's not. Or the fact that it sounds like a porn site like it does. videos or mm-hmm. your x content find my x content it's go like subscribe to my x page right yeah like adult content <laughs> site or yeah, it's, yeah. exactly i think the biggest issue you have is that twitter is i feel like it's more than a brand i feel like it's almost a culture because like yes. tweeting i mean even when i'm on threads sometimes i find myself saying like oh i just tweeted on threads and i'm like wait no that's not how that works yeah. but um like how do you just get rid of tweets or tweeting like you know mm-hmm. i know and i think that's one of the biggest shockers to it is it's not like you you nailed it perfectly it is a culture it's something that has been around for like 20 what Right. Maybe 18, 20 years or something like that at this point. And everyone, I think I mentioned something like it's used as a verb. Like how many other platforms have the action of the platform is now a verb that you can use the way that you can use tweet. So it's kind of like it is like definitely the end of an era. I think that in some ways, Elon Musk has this like eccentric, sadistic personality where like he likes to see the impact of his actions in like a huge scale. And so I think, and I mentioned a call out from Casey Newton of The Platformer, which is an awesome Substack publication. You guys should subscribe to it. He mentioned something like, it's (laughs) this whole 
shape of Musk's project is really just an extended act of cultural vandalism is what he called it. Oh, um, wow. The same way that he graffitis his 420s and his 69s all over his corporate filings, the same way that he kind of, you know, paints over corporate signage and office rooms, he also kind of delights in some way in like deleting or erasing the Twitter that was like he loves this shit like think about when he brought in the sink like let that sink in that kind of stuff is part of his humor so yeah. um, it is sad to see it kind of go down in such a dramatic fashion I will right. miss the Twitter that was but I don't think that like all bets are off the table I think that we're gonna see some interesting things we don't know if it'll last I still don't even really know like what to call it do we call it Twitter still? Like, what are we going to do for the newsletter now? Right. Hi, guys. This is the X section. Like, <laughs> welcome to the Taylor Davis X section. Like, X news. That's not appropriate. Okay, wait. Before we move on from Twitter, give me a... Do you feel comfortable giving, like, a quick rundown of, like what an everything app, super app is, and, like, what we how WeChat compares to that? I mean, sure, we have, he's like obsessed with WeChat for some reason. I don't really know. I mean, I have it. I don't have access to WeChat and I don't, I haven't really done a deep dive on them or pulled up too much about them, but I do know, you know, they're calling this a super app because it's like the app, which at that point, I feel like it should just be, I don't know. I'm not a software person, but I feel like it should just be a software that runs on your device and yeah. you're able to, I don't know how that would work, but anyways, and so anyways, yeah, they were like all native features anyways. Right. So you're able to like have your social on there. So I'm guessing, you know, that would be different than, I don't know, would it be like all Instagram and Facebook combined or how that would work? I don't know. Yeah. Um, like you can, you know, DoorDash your food on there and then it also has like all of your banking info on there and your maps and so it's basically just this one platform that has everything you could ever need to go about your daily life and I don't think I like that but no. I don't think I well, want like, think about why though in China that's a thing like what so this is where it kind of like I have a lot of thoughts about this and I won't go like too too deep but it's interesting to me because for years, Elon Musk has been talking about like this concept of like a WeChat, but in the Western society in the United States. And he just, it, it's now being brought to apparently fruition, but like that's also, he thinks that it's a competitive advantage because one doesn't already exist in the United States. But exactly what you said, Anna, is like, is that something that we want here? Because in China, it works because of government restrictions and communism you know things that require you to literally submit your social security number to this app in china so that it can track everything about you um right. you do your food deliveries your banking your your medical records your social messaging like all of it yeah exactly you do it all with this app on me like I know he doesn't care about me like I just live no. in Florida but <laughs> I don't think I want one app having all of that info on no. me like like right now I mean unless you have threads because if you delete threads you'll delete Instagram, your Instagram yeah. but right now like if I want to fucking get rid of Snapchat because I don't want to deal with it anymore I could just delete that app and not have to worry about it because I have my other options yep if you have one app that everything is tied into what if one day yeah. you, you know don't feel safe with that app or don't feel yeah. comfortable with how well, think about the leverage that it gives people who have access to that data oh, which yeah. obviously makes sense for a place like china i will say again not going too deep into the like weeds with that but it makes a lot more sense where you know in in western culture there is this like this desire to protect identity and to you know, have privacy and to have a right to your data and your information, which is like why we opt into things and you can opt out of data collection, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, sure, he can be building this vision of a super app that has everything connected to it. But like, is that something that we really want? And is that the reason why it hasn't been done here before? Because it's not something that we want. Like, I don't, I don't know. Jury is out. Yeah. I don't think I would sign up for it. I'd 
my mm-hmm. I'm not yeah I, I don't know I guess it would depend on how it looks but I don't think I would feel comfortable Mm-mm. especially if it's my Weird. banking info I'm so yeah. careful about where my you know banking info is I won't even log into my banking um app if I'm like on a unsecure wi-fi network like oh yeah no because fraud and all kinds of shit and like with right. all the bots and shit like that that's you know on twitter it's just right. sorry x I- I'm we so don't guys. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Help us. Let's take a poll. What should we call it? We're naming Twitter. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that is pretty much the tea over on Twitter X. <laughs> but I know we've been also keeping tabs on Threads, and it's still an interesting sort of uh, what four weeks post launch now. Three four weeks post launch. So. Yeah. What do you know about Threads? Is Zuck still trying to fight Elon? Is that a, or no? Yeah, are they still trying to go at like, is this combat thing still a thing? I don't think the combat thing was ever at. Oh, I don't know. I feel like it was all, I low key feel like him, uh, he was conspiracies. And they were like, haha, you know what would be funny? Haha. If we like, let's, let's troll the people. <laughs> like, and then, you know, Elon, you get down, you go find uh, like a coach and pretend to be wrestling. I think that would be so fun. I, I kind of feel. I kind of feel like that's what's going on because I haven't seen anything about them actually fighting. Yeah, um, yeah, it was definitely just a little PR hustle, I think. Right. But also at the same time, I would not be surprised if, like, randomly one day they're like, "We're fighting in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand on like August 14th. <laughs> Tickets are a thousand dollars ahead." <laughs> past them, you know, like, I need ice money <laughs> for <laughs> IBX. <laughs> um, so threads is. I mean, my buddy would always be on suck. Uh, yeah. for a minute, but mm-hmm. Thread is, I don't know if you want to call it struggling uh, to keep people's attention, it seems like, because the app's number of daily active users fell again. So last week, it really? continued to grow. It fell. Um, and this week, again, it fell to 13 million, which is 70% less than its July 7th peak that you know that was like its strongest week. Uh, my God. And so X or whatever the hell uh, still pulls in around two hundred million per day. So I mean, I think the only way Thread stays afloat is either if X like falls apart and <laughs> um, Elon completely like makes it not what Twitter was, mm-hmm. um, or Threads can continue to add new updates that keep people interested. Because right now it is a very, very simple app. It doesn't have a following feed, although they are saying that they're planning to launch that this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, there's not much to keep you around besides if you've already built a community. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, you know, you the people you follow on Instagram are the kind of people you don't want to just see and you want to, like, hear from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, right? Well, that's right. what I feel like. Like, my current thoughts around threads, I always just call it threads. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I threaded yesterday that I've been a bad friend because I haven't been on threads. And I was so excited for it when it launched. But I, like, kind of lost interest because of the fact that it's, like, I scroll, there is no curated algorithm, and it feels like all the content is like evergreen, like boiled down LinkedIn content. I would agree. <laughs> well, I think, right? As most people's strategy has been, which we've talked about this, is pull all of your best performing content over from your other platforms. Right. To make it fit more of a threads feel and mm-hmm. post it, I think literally everyone is following that. Everyone's advice. like, Yes, let me. Well, and it's probably whatever existing algorithm that they have in place right now is like is promoting that kind of stuff because they know it's like it's tried and true, it's proven right. kind of content that works and ranks well. And so, I think even probably Meta is still trying to figure out what they're going to do with threads, if we're yeah. being honest. Like, it was definitely a quick build for them, but I do have hope for it. I was telling somebody earlier that I think that threads almost feels like just at this point right now, not to say there's no potential for it, but it almost feels like where just the people who like to hang out on Instagram are hanging out, but they just like it's just the another side of 
Instagram. Right. <laughs> That's what it feels like to me very much. I'm struggling finding the same like audience and the same group of people as like on Twitter or even LinkedIn. So like it is uh, interesting. Search feature, just not great either. Mm-hmm. And just, there's just so much, you know, there's so much, I mean, Twitter's been, whatever the app is called has been around for forever. So there's just so much more that's on there. And, but I yeah. like, like I really hope thread sticks around. I like just being unhinged on there. I just like saying whatever the heck and not really caring. Yeah, you can just do whatever you want on there. <laughs> on there. Um, I did see their, I guess, a new iOS update dropped recently. Uh-huh. So they already have translations on the app. They're saying, I don't see it, but they're saying there should be a follows tab on your activity. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't see it today. Maybe I need to update the app. Maybe. That might be what I need to do too. They are working on, or they've launched loading improvements. Then there should also be like a following button on Mm -hmm. the threads page or on like the like homepage. Like you can follow Mm -hmm. the person that you're seeing right from there instead of having Mm -hmm. to click their profile. Um, Yeah. Finally. And I guess, you know, like a handful of other small bugs. So Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing of those so maybe maybe need to go i did see on instagram instead of having like you know the number that you joined at, at mm-hmm. on thread now on people's profiles it's like a little the little the little threads logo is in the right hand top corner if you're on thread then you click on that and it will take okay you but they did change that over on instagram oh okay so it t- kind of toggles back and forth then yeah interesting see it's getting closer and closer to being sort of like interwoven i'll have to find the tweet but like somebody this the tweet the i'll have to find the x oh of God. somebody did a uh, redesign of the threads logo in the twitter bird because now the twitter name is on the table like wouldn't that just be such poetic justice if like <laughs> Zuck looped back around and was like, wait, I want to buy Twitter or like buy the name rights to Twitter. I, <laughs> like, can you imagine what the fuck would happen? I also don't know what's going on with that. Uh, what was it? There was some kind of lawsuit that Elon was threaten- threatening. Oh my God. I, know where that's I feel at. like that man just like lives for lawsuits though. <laughs> for for yeah. instigating them and, you know, executing them. Right. Like, I, yeah, I would agree with that. He lives for that drama, Slay Queen. That is his life. <laughs> okay, so what else do we got to talk about? We talk. Oh, oh, grimace. Oh my gosh, this, grimace. I'm like still confused. I think, <laughs> grimace. dude. I knew it was hitting hard when, like, a couple weeks ago, my brother, my younger brother, started sending me TikToks of this grimace shit, like people dying, uh-huh. and I'm like what is happening and i just started kind of tracing it back and i was like i know that anna is gonna cover this shit because it is funny and so random so explain to me (laughs) explain to me what it is because i know that we like included it as a snippet a couple weeks ago but we didn't really like go in depth on it no it went mega viral it only yeah I think it's still pretty viral. So if you don't know who Grimace is, which I'm still not completely familiar, I guess it's like this either. armed, I, I watched the commercial and I was like, what the, what is even happening? So it's like this four armed purple fluffy monster who's like stealing milkshakes from Ronald McDonald in this commercial. Yeah. Yes, Ronald like tricks Grimace into falling into a pool to get rid of him. And so I guess Grimace is back for revenge. And it's Grimace's birthday. So McDonald's came out with the purple shake. So what you see all over TikTok right now is people saying, like, happy birthday, Grimace. I'm trying the new shake. And then <laughs> something psycho happens. And there's like some edit of them either just like floating face down in water. <laughs> Or, or um, like passed out on a street corner with the <laughs> cup, like the cup like spilled all around. I like ominous music. Yeah, um, Courtney Cox did it, but she had her like pretended that her dog drank the <laughs> shake, and then the dog like turns into this giant monster dog that's like coming <laughs> from her. And people are just having a lot of fun with this, and I can't remember. There was some tweet that I saw from McDonald's. Oh, I'll just pull it up. I mean, or there was some something. They're still calling it a tweet on X, so I don't yeah. know. Anyways, yeah, yeah, exactly. uh, we have no shame here. 
<laughs> link to the newsletter. But anyways, McDonald's tweeted out like me pretending I don't see the Grimace shake trend. And it's like this photo of Grimace. And the funny thing is the commercial that, you know, was forever ago. Wait, there was from, it was forever ago. Hang on, let me just see where it was. Yeah. It was well, like, like so the Grimace, like, here's my whole thing with Grimace that I, the very little that I know about it. Apparently it was a he or they, I don't know, <laughs> identity. Grimace was a, like, a monster or a caricature or a character that was, like, introduced in, like, the 90s. Like yes. late 90s, I think. And I didn't even know that. I was like, I heard of the trend and then I like have a vague memory. Like I was like a 90s kid or early 2000s, like grew up in that era and I fucking loved McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So I do have like vague memories of like some purple creature, but I did not know it was this shit. And I bring it up to uh, my husband, Rick, the other night. And he's like, how do you not know what Grimace is? Grimace is an icon. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> It's like Grimace is fucking famous. <laughs> I Not guess in fucking America, maybe in Canada. Maybe, but I guess he's supposed to be the embodiment of a milkshake or a yes. taste bud. A taste I bud. Yes. Like that. I don't know how I feel about <laughs> that. I don't think I like that. Like no, no I've seen like all these memes where every, it's like a every, it's like the everyone like trend everyone in the McDonald's is like everyone Grimace is the weirdest of McDonald's mascots McDonald's he's actually a taste bud everyone <laughs> like, what was that supposed to make us feel better right he's no. the oldest taste bud like <laughs> Oh my god, I love it. So then did like McDonald's come back and actually other than that tweet where they tweeted as Grimace, like did they have any official statements or are they playing into the trend at all yet? Cuz I'm they're super very, curious like they're, playing, they're definitely playing into the trend with like similar to the tweet that I talked about before. And then their social media director put out some long, I think it was originally on LinkedIn, would put out some long thing on Twitter. I forgot that you can do such long things now it annoys me. <laughs> um, <laughs> he said that the Grimace shake trend, they didn't actually plant it. I don't I don't actually know who the original person is who Yeah. Like I think it totally just started. It's like one of those bizarre, very organic things that can only happen on like a weird space and time continuum of the internet. Like right place, right time. Somebody just did something fucking crazy and then everyone was like, Yes, let's drink this milkshake and pretend to die. I remember seeing the first few of them, like, when I saw this trend on TikTok a couple of weeks ago, I was like, what of my first thoughts were like, this cannot be good for McDonald's branding. I was wondering at the time, like, what is their perception of what's going on right now? Because it is funny, it is viral, but it does paint a picture of like people are drinking your product and dying. <laughs> like, that's the, that's the trend. Yeah, that's such a good point. <laughs> so, like, on one hand it's fucking hilarious so like if i was mcdonald's i'd be like yeah do it but you know yeah. I, like from the like brand safety and like whatever standpoint they're probably like mm, fda don't come for us yeah that's just, i didn't even think about it that way oh my god <laughs> that's uh, so funny though yes. because this grimace shit is crazy i'm like here for it though and people are still doing it a good job with it another thing that yeah. was or i think still is really popular on tiktok i don't think we've talked about this is the i'm gonna maybe not pronounce it right i think the rimini app it's spelled r-e-m-i-n-i -I. Rimini. oh it's insane and i tested it out it's so I crazy had someone send me a bunch of headshots for work and they were like put these on the website <laughs> and they weren't like of the same quality that we normally put on our website so I was like well, like this doesn't match everything else like what am I gonna do I don't I'm gonna probably push back on this and then I saw the TikTok trend happening so I went and tested it out on like and I have only one photo of these people so if you like download the app it asks you to upload like eight mm -hmm. different copies of yourself mm -hmm. to, like, pull from different angles mm -hmm. of your but I only have one photo of all of these people and I'm like oh, okay well I guess I'll try it it does take like 18 minutes to get um yeah. five different photos I think it was 99 cents for the first week which I actually need to cancel that <laughs> but um that's how it goes that's how they get you 
right? It's insane how well it works. I know. Crazy how great of a job it does from one blurry, like zoomed in, just face headshot that I have, like literally a headshot. And now I'm able to give them like a little, like a little chest, a little little photo shoot of themselves of like. Of they professional so headshots that never happen. Yeah, and they look so realistic. I've also downloaded it a couple of weeks ago, obsessed. Like, could not believe it. I literally sat on my phone every night for like five days, like after work hours. And Rick's like, you need to stop with this. Like, <laughs> no, I did myself. I did him. I did our toddler son. <laughs> like, they're so cute. I can't. Mm-hmm. I need to see yours if you did any for yourself. I like totally would I love to see them. for myself. Yeah, but I need to. Oh, yes. Need to Just them. like do the thing where you upload as many images as you can, because I found that like it gave me like supreme like I have this like weird divot in my nose (laughs) like full exposure right now like my nose kind of curves and it replicated it in all of the images yeah like perfectly like the asymmetrical aspects of my face so I don't know it was it was wild everyone should try this app I need to test this out I'm so curious if you put like not a photo of yourself but maybe like a design of something into it Mm. I'm curious what it would do with that you know, like well, if you I know that it recognizes faces. Okay. I'm just so curious if like you put a panda bear in there and it was just a bunch of panda bears. Like would it just give you a panda? <laughs> like, would it give you a panda? Probably. <laughs> well, I, I know. So it is like facial recognition trained and stuff. So I'm sure that, that that's how they like mesh it all together. But, like yeah. I uploaded such a mix. I found it to be best when I uploaded like, I don't know, however many limit, 12 images or something like that is the is the limit. But like none of them were from the same like photo set like right. they were like photos from of myself from a couple years ago all the way to photos I took the other day so just to give it like a broad range of like what you know different profile perspectives look like mm-hmm. it's so insane I like don't <laughs> I told my family I'm gonna like print out all the ones of my kid where he's like literally like standing in front of the Eiffel Tower and stuff and just like put them around my house and like <laughs> that's his world travel book. <laughs> that's amazing. It's wild man. Yeah. Oh, that is so interesting though. Well, share your goods. I'll share some some of mine too, because we could probably like include a little thing. That's we need cool. to get them. Ramini needs to sponsor us. Damn, like we're out here doing all the hard work. Right. All right, you guys, that is another episode of the Sauce Pod. If you liked this approach, this format of conversation that we had today, please let us know. We mentioned a couple weeks ago that you can reply, actually, wherever you're streaming your podcast. So if you're listening to this on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, or our website, like there's actually a comment section on podcasts. Who knew? So let us know how you're feeling. You can also reach us on Twitter, X, X Twitter. Yeah, honestly, just find us on threads or Instagram. Like that's probably where we're gonna be. On Meta's side now. If you go back and listen to like our freaking oh my gosh, what are they called when we were recording on Twitter? Spaces. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you go back and listen to that, we were all like, oh my god, we hate Meta. No, (laughs) we still do sometimes. But no, well, remember when everyone hated Zuckerberg and now everyone like is obsessed with him? full circle you guys full circle um r.i.p twitter r.i.p all of our twitter fans we hope that you find the transition into x easy we'll keep you guys updated also find us on substack because i don't think i mentioned that yet but substack the sauce ffs.substack.com we write all kinds of good stuff every week the news the updates everything that you need to know as a creator especially a tech interested or a tech adjacent creator who likes to learn how to figure out how these tools work to make your life a little bit easier. So we have a weekly newsletter. We also write additional content every week for our paid subscribers. So thank you guys and lots of good stuff hitting your inboxes. So catch us there and we'll be back again next week. Bye guys. Bye guys. Thanks, Anna. Hey guys, that's a wrap for this week's episode of the sauce pod. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Maybe even learned a thing or two. Don't forget, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can also subscribe to our newsletter that goes out every Monday night. All of the latest and greatest tips, news, and trends for content creators and digital entrepreneurs. Until next time, stay saucy.